This clip considers uh, again the ISLM model and uh, will specifically uh, look at how fiscal policy and how monetary policy works. Well, let's get right at it. Uh, number one, fiscal policy. <coughs> so, fiscal policy in the ISLM model can simply be shown as a rightward shift of the IS curve. Uh, IS curve shifts towards the right and we get a new equilibrium that features compared to the old equilibrium uh, higher output and a higher interest rate. So what exactly is going on there? Uh, let's uh, think about what fiscal policy is. So one, we have an increase in government expenditures and or a decrease in taxes. That's simply fiscal policy. What happens when you uh, have such a fiscal expansion? Well, this uh, fiscal, fiscal expansion fiscal expansion leads to an increase in income through the multiplier process. Now, third, that increase in income in turn leads to an increase in money demand due to higher transactions demand. Uh, the money demand curve shifts right and that in the financial market leads to an increase in the interest rate. Fourth, the increase in the interest rate triggers a decrease in investment and hence through the multiplier process a decrease in income. Okay, so we have here an increase in income and here a decrease in income. It's quite easy to see though that as long as the LM curve here is upward sloping, as long as the LM curve is not vertical, the net effect is positive. So, uh, let me highlight that. Fiscal policy leads through the multiplier process to, to uh, higher output. Higher output leads to a higher interest rate, which in turn reduces investment, which reduces income, but the net effect is positive as long as the LM curve is not vertical. Let's look at that separately in the goods market and the financial market. So we have Z and Y in the goods market and we have an initial Z1 and then we get a fiscal expansion which shifts us up from the first goods market equilibrium to the second one so that is uh, one, this one here, and two here, the increase in income. Three will have to go to the financial market. That's a very crooked line. Let me try again. financial market we have a money demand function and the increase in income here leads to a rightward shift of this money demand function so that is three the increase of the sh rightward shift in money demand and this increase in the interest rate which then ultimately reduces investment and hence slightly shifts downward this function here for because of lower investment and the net effect will be positive so this equilibrium will be towards the left of the initial but to the right of the intermediate one uh, because the LM curve is upward sloping. Okay. Next, monetary policy.
monetary. Simply summarized again in the ISLM uh, model in the graphical depiction here through a shift in DLM curve. Uh, a monetary expansion shifts the LM curve downwards and leads through a lower interest rate to higher output. And what's going on here? First, uh, we have a money supply expansion which leads to a reduction in the interest rate. Second, the reduction in the interest rate leads to an increase in investment and hence an increase in output through the multiplier process in the goods market. But that increase in income leads as well to an increase in money demand which will lead to a higher interest rate which then uh, again through investment leads to lower output through the multiplier process. As before, this process will net lead to an increase in output as long as the IS curve is not uh, vertical. So as long as the IS curve is ne negatively sloped, uh, the net effect is positive. So we have a net effect of monetary policy on output. In the two markets separately uh, considered, we can we have uh, a money demand function and an initial real money supply and an initial equilibrium, and then we get a shift which is one above here. The increase in the money supply leads to uh, this decrease in the interest rate. In the goods market, this decrease in the interest rate uh, Oops, excuse me, here we go, and here we go. This decrease in the interest rate leads to uh, an increase in investment. Now I've, I've drawn it the wrong way around, apologies for that. That's what happens when you try to be efficient. So the decrease in investment leads to uh, the decrease in the interest rate leads to an increase in investment. Here we have the decrease in the interest rate, increase in investment, and this increase in output. That is step two. Step three then means that uh, back in the financial market we get a rightward shift of the money demand function. This is 3 so that the interest rate rises back up slightly and that equivalently leads to uh, again a decrease in investment due to the rise in the interest rate. Step 4 but the net effect from the initial equilibrium to the ultimate equilibrium will be positive as long as the IS function is negatively sloped. Alright, last point, just to pull it together quickly, the policy mix. Let's consider a situation where we have an ISLM model that describes an economy that is in a deep recession. So this equilibrium here, this initial equilibrium is features high unemployment and overall a very undesirable situation for uh, the voters, uh, politicians uh, and so on. 
what can the policy makers do? Well, the policy mix uh, can use both fiscal and monetary so that you get a fiscal expansion, fiscal expansion, the rightward shift, the rise in G and or a fall in T. But in order to not get the negative impact of the rising interest rate that we would have to this equilibrium, we do at the same time see uh, accommodation by the central bank so that we get a downward shift in the LM curve due to an increase in the money supply that s avoids the rise in the interest rate so that we not only get to this new uh, equilibrium but indeed get to a new Y star which maybe might be uh, close to a full employment equilibrium. That is what we mean by the policy mix, the appropriate uh, combination of monetary and fiscal policies.